Chers auditeurs, Dear listeners, bonjour. Welcome in Comdarchi Podcast Season 4. Saison 4 dans le monde fascinant des architectes. And in the architectural projects. Je suis Anne-Charlotte de Ponte, passionnée d'architecture et docteur des universités en histoire de l'archi. I am one of the spokespersons of Anne Charlotte, who is a PhD in architecture history. Merci. Thank you. D'être avec moi aujourd'hui. To be with us today. Et And maintenant, now, lundi en français, place au talent. And Wednesday, let's talk projects. In English, of course. Bienvenue dans Comme d'Archi. Dear listeners, good morning. Welcome to this Comme d'Archi Season 4, Episode 69. This is Esther on behalf of Anne Charlotte. Here is a summary written by Anne Charlotte, who positions herself as the narrator. So when I say I, it's her speaking. It is important to insist on this today and you will quickly understand why. But first of all, this is a summary in English of the fascinating interview in French with Guillaume Le Chevalier Boissel, which has just been put online. Today we find ourselves in a very special universe, Guillaume's universe, a universe that refers to the Gothic imagination populated by flights of tin, lead and copper pipes, often wrapped in dark wood, surrounded by the great walls of cool stone. Have you guessed? Guillaume's passion is the organ, this fantastic instrument whose possibilities go far beyond the liturgical field, an instrument that echoes architecture. A digression in Comdarchi? I don't think so. Because Guillaume is also a draftsman, His job is to draw during the week architectural projects for a Norman agency, that of Jérôme Pierre, located in Valogne, in the Manche. An agency that realizes different types of projects, public and private, ex nihilo or in renovation. By the way, I wanted to thank Guillaume for coming from the Manche to testify, and my cousin Alice for connecting us. In his spare time, Guillaume designs organ cases. In 2021, the city of Versailles called him to draw by hand the organs of the royal city for an ephemeral exhibition highlighting the organ case in the public space. Guillaume also plays the organ out of passion. Often on organs from my own grandfather's factory, the Manufacture Boucher de Bière so I couldn't resist treating the subject of organs and architecture, two disciplines that resonate with each other. A subject that Guillaume, at the age of 25, with his youthful ardor, embodies wonderfully. His culture is remarkably nourished. His culture is embodied. He puts it in color as much with his brushes as with the keyboards and the organs. 100% invested, he gathers all possible energies to save the organ of his commune, Valogne. With his other training in computer graphics, he created the site of the Friends of the Organ of Valogne, orgvalogne.wixsite.com. Orgvalogne, O-R-G-U-E-V-A-L-O-G-N-E-S dot Wixsite, W-I-X-S-I-T-E dot com site on which one can make a donation for the restoration with the tab Support Us in the right top corner. Do not hesitate if the cause touches you. In any case, a thousand bravo to this youth, humble of birth, who knows how to fill his life and who takes over in human universes of unusual dimensions. Before reporting to you in more detail the universe of Guillaume, I wanted to specify that If I grew up in this universe as well as my numerous cousins, I am not a specialist of the question. I certainly knew the manufacture, and my memories can be summed up as follows. My grandmother, Marguerite, for whom I sometimes turned the pages of the score when she was at the piano, my grandmother, a pianist and organist, and also the mother of 15 children, including my mother, My grandmother, a former pupil of Marcel Dupré, would take me to the manufacture from time to time when she was going to rehearse before Sunday Mass in the church of Saint-Clément in Nantes. I was amazed to see my grandmother's slender body, which always stood upright, 
come alive for the occasion, moving from head to toe as she played her vast repertoire on the organ of the factory. I also remember when we used to go and play with my cousin Benoit in the wood workshop despite the prohibitions. We love to throw ourselves into the mountains of shavings. By the way, forgive me, Benoit, for revealing this childhood secret kept for so many years. The foundry to which we had access only under high surveillance, the drawing workshop and its bay window that we used to pass by to go and have lunch at our Aunt Biches, my eyes were just at the height of the drawing tables. The unmistakable smell of the overwaxed wooden stairs, crackling as we passed, the clock marking time invariably. The portraits of the ancestors whose eyes reminded us of our duties. And Uncle Joe, Joseph's son, who had taken over the factory at the wrong time and who almost never left his office, much to our despair. Because the organ, and yes, the organ, aspires just like the architecture of which it is also made. Let's go back to Guillaume's childhood. As a child, he was fascinated by nature, as well as by drawing, finally, a way to communicate, to offer a drawing. Around the age of 15, he expressed his desire to play a musical instrument. The goal was not to go flirting on the beach with a guitar, but to attract attention in a different way. He began learning the organ. At the time of the orientations, discouraged by the teaching body for the architectural way connoted without outlets, he integrated a professional branch not by spite, but by passion for the architecture. He makes studies of draftsmen, then of economy of the construction, calculation, to live with a solid base. The economy was in a slump when I went to school. The orientation towards architectural schools was discouraged as teachers felt that there were too many students for too few openings, says Guillaume. After his back pour in Coutances, during his BTS studies in construction, he discovered wood and appreciated the more creative aspect of this teaching. Then he finally trained as a computer graphics designer. Then he enters the office of Jérôme Piard, installed in his city. In this small agency, he works from the preliminary project stage to the execution stage, including the estimation. Guillaume has always dreamed of a thousand jobs, but he's accomplished for the moment. For Guillaume, the organ is a bit like the grail. The instrument refers to the architectural heritage par excellence. One can find the organ not only in churches, but also in opera houses and concert halls. In Japan, where there are also churches, organs can only be found in concert halls. The organ is a house within a house. It is a building. It is the price of building a house. We find the same lots in the construction phases. The structural work, but also the carpentry, electricity, plumbing, waterproofing, acoustics, harmonization, cabinet making, leather work, the pipes, and behind that, the draftsmen. The organ builder is the architect of all that. Everything is done in the factory on a scale of one. Everything can be dismantled. The instrument is reassembled on site. There is a lack of these jobs in France. French factories are recruiting today. As in the building trade, there is a lack of apprenticeships in the world of the organ. Inside the organ, there are rooms. A keyboard is a bit like a room. Each keyboard is dedicated to a piece with different stops, different sounds. That will give this rich and unique color to the organ. A key is a pipe, but also a key is four pipes at the same time. I can have pipes that sing in C, in G, says Guillaume. The organ cannot be imitated even if it tried to imitate the orchestra in the 19th century. You can go to Paris, to saint eustache you will listen to a grandiose organ. There are huge pipes, a variety of sound with five keyboards and 8,000 pipes. Note, all the fragments that we listen to in the podcast are played by Guillaume on organs in Brittany or in the Manche region, which came out of the Boucher de Bière factory, a factory which, according to Guillaume, revolutionized the world of the organ, one of the last and largest factories in France, which had between 40 and 50 employees. This is very important in this type of business. 
Joseph Bechet, my grandfather, whom Guillaume quotes, followed the path of modernity with the electrification of organs. Guillaume's generation appreciates these organs from the 60s and 70s, whereas the previous generation destroyed a lot of heritage, exactly as in architecture. Let us quote, for example, the Hospital of Caen to which Guillaume is interested, where, instead of a asbestos removal campaign and rehabilitating, a heritage is destroyed. It is necessary to leave time to take the measure of the true value of a heritage. I will add for my part that the intelligence is not to exclusively appreciate the appearance of the instrument or of an architecture, but all that the instrument or the architecture brings, its virtuosity not to flatter the eye but to assume what it was built for. You understand now why the links between modernity and heritage are quite natural for me, as well as the links between architecture and music. And by the way, I take the opportunity to point out that I have difficulty understanding dogmatic visions, even closed ones. For example, those who refute modernity as much as those who refute heritage. Those who swear by the past as much as those who swear by reinvention. Come on, dust off the classics. Come on, drop your vanity, the reinventors. A little humility, for goodness sake. We're just bathing through. In the profession, it is important to dissociate the old from the contemporary. But it is also important to mark its time. Guillaume insists, noticing contemporary organs in a church shows that the profession of organ building still exists and that it is an evolving discipline. If you make a pastiche, it is not a good thing because it erases the identity and blurs the historical readings. It's exactly the same thing in architecture. Don't forget, if you are convinced to support the campaign to save the organs of Valogne on orgvalogne.wixsite.com, orgvalogne, O-R-G-U-E-V-A-L-O-G-N-E-S, dot wixsite, W-I-X-S-I-T-E, dot com. Our dearest wish is to make a new podcast on the subject with the expert voices of my family. Until then, see you next week with a new issue and take care. Goodbye. Thank you for listening. Thanks to Julien Robourg, sound engineer, who is collaborating with us today. Don't forget to tune in to our previews on Instagram at Comdarchi Podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, don't hesitate to promote it by giving it five stars and a little comment on Apple Podcast or on your favorite podcast platform. And above all, subscribe to listen to all of our episodes for free. See you soon, and until then, take care of yourself.